The Witch in the Wood by T. H. White, Chapter Twenty Nine. King Pellinore had enjoyed his breakfast and was sitting in the armory, scrubbing his gauntlets with sand. They were the difficult part because they were a mass of hinged plates over the knuckles, and all these plates overlapped one another slightly. You had to scrub under the overlay, and this was the worst place for rusting, and it was a tricky job. You hurt your fingers on the sharp places. Excuse me, your majesty, said Gareth, when he had run the king to earth. But Alice says that it's neither Sir Grubor nor Sir Palabidus have all... In have been in all night, their beds have not been slept in, and the butler says they didn't come to breakfast. Gareth's cold was no better. Good gracious, said the king, I left them last night in the wood. The porter says that distant shouting has been heard on and off, coming from the direction of the wood, and it is believed that there is an evil spirit there. Dear me, dear me, I suppose I must have got into some sort of trouble with it. What? They must have got into some sort of trouble with it. What? Do you think I ought to go and rescue them? I don't know. Why do you say do, my dear boy? You should say no, no, like that. I've got a cold, said Gareth, coldly going away. He hated, he hated feeling ill and did not really care whether he ever saw any of the knights again or not. Well, well, said the king, how extraordinary. I suppose I shall have to do something about it. Fancy old Grum getting into trouble like that. Perhaps it would be safer if I were to put on my armor. Here, Pellinor, hi, what over here? Why, Grummore, what are you doing in that tree? Look at the beast, man, look at the beast. Oh, hello. Oh, hello, you've got all Galistan. My dear chap, for heaven's sake, do something. We've been here all night. But why ever are you dressed up like that, Grummore? You've got spots all over you or something. And what has Palamedus got on his head? Don't stand there arguing, man. But you've got a sort of tail, Grummore. I can see it hanging down below. Of course I've got a tail. Can't you stop talking and do something? We've been in this dreaded tree all night, and we're positively dropping with fatigue. Go on, Pelinor, kill that beast of yours at once. Oh, I say, whatever should I want to kill her for? Good gracious heavens, man. Haven't you been trying to kill her for the last 18 years? Now come on, Pelinor, be a good chap and do something. If you don't do something quick, we shall both tumble out. But what I can't understand, said the king plaintively, is why you should be in this tree at all. And why are you dressed up like that? You look as if you were dressed as some sort of beast yourselves. And where did the beast come from anyway? What? I mean, the whole thing is so sudden. Pelinor, once and for all, will you kill that beast? Why? Because it's got us up this tree. It's extremely unusual for the beast, remarked the king. She doesn't generally take an interest in people like this. Palamides, said Sir Grumor hoarsely, says he believes she has fallen in love with us. Fallen in love? Well, you see, we were dressed up as a beast. Like, 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 exclaimed Sir, Palamide, Sir Palamides faintly. King Pellinor slowly began to laugh for the first time since he had arrived in Lothane. <laughs> well, he said, <laughs> that's my soul. Did you ever hear of anything to match it? Why does Palamidas think the old girl has fallen for him? The beast, said Sir Gromor with dignity, has been walking round and round the tree all night. She has been rubbing herself against it and purring, and she sometimes curls her neck round the trunk and gazes up at us in a sort of way. What sort of way, Gromor? My dear fellow, look at her now. The questing beast, who had not paid the least attention to the arrival of the royal gentleman, who was practically her master, was staring up at Sir Palamidas with all her soul in her eyes. Her chin was pressed to the trunk of the tree in a passion of devotion, and occasionally she gave her tail a little wag. She moved it laterally on the surface of pine needles, where its numerous heraldic tufts and foliations made a rustling noise, and sometimes she scratched the tree with a small, wisp, with a small whimper. Then, Feeling that she had been too forward, she would arch her graceful serpent neck and hide her blushing head beneath her belly, peeping outward all the time out of the corner of one eye. Well, Grummel, what do you want me to do? We want to come down, said Sir Grummel. I can see that, said the king. It seems a perfectly sensible thing to want. Mind you, I don't understand exactly how the whole thing started, what, but I can see that absolutely. 
Kill it, Pelinor, kill the wretched creature. Oh, really, said the king. I don't know about that. After all, what harm has she done? All the world loves a lover. What don't you what don't you know? And I don't see why the poor beastie should be killed just because she has got the gentle passion. I mean to say, I aim in love myself, aim it to, I am in love myself, am not I? What? It gives you a sort of fellow feeling. King Berenor, said Sir Palamides defiantly. Unless some steps are taken pretty damn quick, yours affectionately will be instantaneously martyred. R.I.P. But my dear Palamides, I can't possibly kill the old beast, don't you see, because my sword is too blunt. Then stun her with it, Pelinor. Give her a good bang on the head with it, man, and perhaps she will get concussion. That's all very well for you, Grumor, old fellow. But suppose it doesn't stun her. It might make her lose her temper, Grumor. And then where should I be? Personally, I can't see why I should want to have the poor creature assaulted at all. After all, she's in love with you, isn't she, what? Whatever the reason for the animal's behaviour, the point is we are in this tree. Then you need. Then all you need to do is come down out of it. My good man, how can we come down to be attacked. It will only be a loving attack, you know, the king pointed out reassuringly. I don't suppose she will do you any harm. All you would have to do would be to walk along in front of her until you reach the castle. What? As a matter of fact, you could perhaps encourage her a bit. After all, everybody likes to have their affection returned. Are you suggesting, asked Sir Grumor coldly, that we should flirt with this reptile of yours? It would certainly make it easier, I mean, the walk back. And how are we to do this, pray? Well, old Palamides could twine his neck round hers occasionally, you know. And you could wag your tail a bit, Grumor. I suppose it could. you couldn't lick her nose. Yours truly, said Palamides feebly, defiantly, finally and with aversion. Can neither twine nor lick also. He is now going to fall. Adieu. And with this, the unfortunate Paynim let go of the tree with both of hands and appeared to be sinking into the monster's jaws. But Sir Grumor caught him, and they remained buttons held, and the, rem and the remaining buttons held him in position. There, said Sir Grumor, now look what you've done. But my dear fellow, I'm not your dear fellow. You're simply abandoning us to destruction. Oh, I say. Yes, you are, heartlessly. The king scratched his head. I suppose, he said doubtfully, I can hold her by the tail or something. Will you make a dash for it? Then do so. If you don't do something immediately, Palamides will fall, and then we shall come in half. I still don't see, said the king sadly, why you had to dress up like this to begin with. It's all a mystery to me. However, he added, taking the beast by the tail, come on, old girl, heave ho. We shall have to do the best we can in the circumstances, now you two run for your lives. Hurry up, Grumor. I don't think the beast is pleased by the feel of her. Are you naughty thing? Leave it, leave it. Run, Grumor. Naughty beast. Ah, oh, nasty, nasty. Leave it. Quick, man, quick. Come away then. Don't touch. Trust. She'll be off in a minute. Come to heel, will you? Heel. Come behind. Oh, you horrid beast. Faster, Grumor. Sit, sit. Lie down, beast. How dare you? Look out, man. She's coming. Oh, you would, would you? There, now she's bitten me. And that is the end of chapter 29.